Hi guys, we're going to continue reading the second part of The Princess and the Warrior, read with permission from the Abrams Books for Young Readers. We left off where Itzta took the tonic, the potion, and we're going to find out what happens. So hopefully you keep your predictions in your head right now, ready to go. The next day before night fell and the first Sitlali appeared in the sky, Boboak defeated Jaguar Claw. Unaware of the lies the messenger had told, the great warrior and his troops marched back to the palace in triumph, ready to share the good news with the princess and the emperor. But when they arrived, they were met with disbelief. Boboak, said the emperor, one of your messengers told us that you were dead. Itzta was heartbroken. She took a special otli to ease her pain, and now we cannot wake her. This can't be true, said Boboak. Itzta, my beautiful princess, has to awaken. He ran to her chamber. He kissed her and held her in his arms. He called out her name over and over. But Itza did not wake up. Cool air will surely revive her, Boboak told the emperor. He carried Itza through the throngs of villagers who wept as they passed, past the milpas, and all through the night to the top of the Tepetl. Tepetl is a mountain. He laid her on the Xochitl bed. bed. He knelt down beside her. The cool mountain air soon turned to snow, but still the princess did not wake up. Boboak refused to move. He stayed ne next to Itza, just as he had promised when he had first met her. As long as the Tonitua rises and as long as the Sontle bird sings. And there's the Sontle. In time, where once there was a princess with her true love by her side, two volcanoes emerged. One is known as the Itzcahuatl, or Sleeping Beauty. The other one is known as the Popocatepetl, or Smoky Mountain. Itzcahuatl pardon, continues to sleep, but Popocatepetl spews ashes and smoke from time to time, as if attempting to wake his sleeping princess. This is the end of the story. Now remember that this was a legend, okay? This a legend explains a story passed by generations and generations explaining why something happens in our life. So right there, it's explaining the legend of the Ichkawatl and the Popocatepetl, which are both in Mexico. Author's note, Ichkawatl and Popocatepetl are two volcanoes located approximately 40 miles southeast of Mexico City, a city that hundreds of years ago used to be the Aztec city of Tenochtitlan. Ichkawatl is dormant, but Popocatepetl is an active volcano. Its most recent eruption occurred in 2013 when it spewed ashes and fragments of fiery rock. Ichcahuatl, the third highest volcano in Mexico, is 17,160 feet tall. Popocatepetl is 17,802 feet tall and is the second highest volcano in Mexico and the fifth highest in North America. The name Ichcahuatl comes from the Nahuatl language. Iztac means white and Xihuatl means woman. 
The volcano is often called the sleeping woman, la mujer dormida, because the four peaks that form the volcano resemble the silhouette of a woman lying down, draped in a blanket of white snow. The name Popocatépetl comes from the Nahuatl words Popoac, smoking, and the Petl mountain. The volcano is often called El Popo for short and sometimes Don Goyo, Mr. Gregory by the villagers of the region. These two majestic volcanoes can be seen on most days by millions of people who live in Mexico City, one of the largest metropolitan areas in the world. Hundreds of years ago, the volcanoes could be seen by the Aztecs, the Tlachcanlans, pardon, and the different peoples who lived in the Central Valley of Mexico. The beauty and the imposing presence of the volcanoes have, have inspired several stories. The most famous story by far is the legend of their origin. The author of this legend is unknown. The story has been passed down originally from generation to generation for centuries. There are different variations of the story. In some versions, Popoac is an Aztec warrior who is sent to war, sometimes to Oaxaca, sometimes to, to Tlacala, Tlachcala, pardon, while his beloved princess awaits him. The other versions, he is a Tlaxcalan um, warrior rebelling against the mighty Aztec emperor, empire. But in all the versions, Popoac returns from war and watches ceaselessly over his beloved princess until the two of them transform into volcanoes. The story I tell in this book is my own version. I have included some of my own twists and details. For instance, I chose the name Popoac's enemy, Jaguar Claw, because there was a famous mixtec warrior king in the 11th century named Eighth Deer Jaguar Claw, who appears in several ancient codices like the Codex Colombino, the Codex Ancient Codices, pardon, the Codexes Xoatl Nutli, and the Codex Bodli. My illustrations draw from the images in those mixtec codices and I wanted to pay a tribute to them. Readers may notice how my in my drawings, as in the ones from those codices, pe people and animals are always drawn in profile. Their entire bodies are usually shown and their ears are often look like it, the number three. Ichkawatl and Popocatepetl have inspired artists for hundreds, perhaps even thousands of years. Storytellers, poets, painters, photographers, and others have created pieces of art to honor the magnificent mountains. My hope is that my story contributes to the vast tradition of art and that it introduces the volcanoes and their legend to a new generation of young readers. The end.